Hello there, I'm Kanari. Thank you for being here, and I hope you're having a nice day. For today's topic, we have... Well, what do we have? Thanks, Kanari. So, just my input on red fall, red fail, or red flail, um, Asus ROG versus a Steam Deck, and the posting on the Diablo 4 mounts that we'll be able to have access to and customize. So, let's start with a red flail. Well, what else is there to say about uh, Red Fall, Red Flail by now, right? So I played Red Fall um, a few hours already. I've, I've done some missions and yeah, pretty much it's a, it's a broken game. Shouldn't have been pushed out for us. Um, and the only reason actually why I played it is because I was planning to play, um, being a Jedi, I was planning to play Jedi Survivor um, last week. But that game too is broken and I'm not willing to give them my money until they fix the game. So I'll eventually purchase Jedi Survivor, but maybe in a few months when they have all the patches, when they have everything that, you know, fixes most, if not all the bugs anyways per PC, right? So I don't think game companies should be releasing games for, for a certain platform if it's not ready for that. They should just be honest. Let's, let's say if they tested it on Xbox or on, on PS5 and or, or on PC, just release the games that's running properly on whichever platform that it has been thoroughly tested on, right? Because these aren't cheap games, right? Redfall is like 70 bucks, Jedi Survivor 2, and the Redfall Bite Back is like 100 bucks. And the only reason I'm playing it is because I didn't get a play, or I didn't get, I didn't buy a Jedi Survivor, and I got this game for free. So basically this one's free uh, when I bought my 40 series card. And that's the only reason I'm playing it anyways, because I wouldn't have bought this game otherwise, right? So um, my expectation was low anyways, because I, I was not really thinking of playing this game. But unfortunately, Jedi Survivor kind of sucked. So with Red Fail or Red Flail, the bad, so the bad. Well, um, the price, right? 70 bucks and 100 bucks for this game. The storyline doesn't bring you in the game too. Doesn't get you invested in the game or the the... The characters in the game too right so the cinematics and the lack there of cinematics it's just like a slideshow right so it's like the project manager or program manager for the game showed the slideshow of the idea right the idea of the storyline and then the executive said yeah do that do that and the project manager thought just use the slideshow that they presented instead of actually creating creating the cinematics for the game right it, for a game at this price, it's just bad. And even if, let's say there's no bugs, right? This game would probably be, you know, it should be like free to maybe 20 bucks, right? So I, I mean, I'd rather play older games like uh, um, God of War than this. I mean, I got it for free. So, you know, maybe I'll play it if I get bored or something, but it's not really in the list of the top games I'll be playing. I'll, I'll just, I mean, you know, it, it's kind of, fun blasting the vampires and all of that stuff but it's the storyline and the game itself it does not you know it doesn't hook you so it, there's no hook on the game so it's it's you can just play forget about it and come back to it and play again if you have time or you want to kill time you know it's not immersive right and i like games that are immersive and kind of gets you in the storyline and the only fun part of this is just you know just Vamps, basically that's kind of the only fun part and uh there's a lot of bugs tons of bugs right tons of bugs where I'm, there's a lot of videos showing that the vampires are you're invisible to them right and or the vampires some, there was a case too when there was a vampire in the house and i was trying to shoot him and the vampire is just like a ghost right you can't shoot them and they don't see you and literally nothing is happening so it's 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 just a junk and a gunk of type of a game. They probably need to polish this more. But then again, at this stage, they'll probably just forget about this game and leave it to you know. I, I just feel sad actually for those who bought this game because for seventy bucks, man. Actually, I wish when I got the forty series, they just they they should have just given me like fifty bucks off Steam or hundred bucks off Steam. That would have been a better way for me to choose a game that I'd love to you know to to play with. But then again. This for me, this game is free and it, that's it. I mean, what else can you say, right? So it's 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 a disappointing game, especially for the price. Now, again, would have been playing Jedi Survivor if 
the game also was running fine, but uh, it's not. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a couple of months before I buy the game. Thank God, at least uh, Diablo 4 is coming out soon, so I'll have some something to play. It'll be like four to six months before I, I get Jedi Survivor, which is also a disappointing uh, port on the PC. So we should really stop quickly giving these, these companies our money if they're not going to produce working games or, you know, I mean, bugs are fine, but not these many bugs, right? I mean, a little bit of glitch here and there, yeah, but oh, there's, there's tons of stuff that they need to work on with these games. So yeah, that's it for the red fail. And uh, let's uh, move on. Okay, now on to something uh, better, right? So we know the Asus ROG Ally, ROG Ally is coming out soon. So it'll be a Steam Deck competitor. So actually I was planning to get the Steam Deck, but I'm going to hold off till we see the Asus ROG Ally that's coming out to see maybe if it's worth waiting for it and the price that it's going to be in. Hopefully we do get a good price and hopefully the software itself will be will be specific to a portable handheld gaming tool for us uh, because the Steam Deck has already been out and it could play games that I'm actually planning to play. I'd at least like to see how the Ally would be able to run these games, right? So I got a few games here that I will definitely be playing around in on whichever portable device that I will be purchasing. So definitely, I you know, um, Steam Deck can already play uh, Street Fighter. Steam Deck could already play Street Fighter. It could also play, of course, Mortal Kombat. These are kind of the two games I've always been playing since I was a kid. Just, you know, not, not like when I just want to play around and just burn some time. It's, it's kind of fun to play with. So, and of course, you also have Steam Deck running um, God of War. So I'm hoping that when the Ragnarok version comes to the PC, I'll be able to play it on the PC and the Steam Deck and or whichever handheld basically that I'm, I'm going to get. So if it's an ally, hopefully it runs all of these games properly. And then we do have, um, and then we do have the Steam Deck running Diablo 4 too, which is a game I'm, I actually already pre-purchased. Now I, I super rarely pre-purchase any games, but I played the beta twice already, right? And I'm going to play the, the, the server lamb a few days from now. So that's the only reason I kind of pre-purchased it because I did enjoy the game and it, it seems like it was running great when I was playing it. So I actually expect the, the full version or the, the finalized version on June to even be more polished than when I was playing the beta. And then of course you got Steam Deck already playing Jedi Survivor, which I will eventually get. I'll give it a few months that they fix all the bugs. And hopefully when, uh, by the time I, I buy it, most, if not all of the bugs are already fixed for the PC. And lastly, look at that. Steam Deck can run Red Fail, I mean Red Fall. And this is the game that, uh, well, I do have. I got it for free. Again, I didn't pay for it. But I don't even know if I'm going to finish the game. Maybe I will. Hopefully, um, the ally can, could, could play these games and more. So let's go through the, uh, the good and the bad of the ally. You know what, let's start with the Steam Deck, right? So Steam Deck had been out for a while. You know, there's a lot of versions, but basically you could get away with getting the uh, the cheapest version and then just upgrading it, right? So let's go with the bad. That's what the ally needs to be, right? The Steam Deck and the whole structure of it, right? So what's the bad thing with Steam Deck is pretty much you need to tinker in some games or tweak it if you want the ga some games to run smoothly. So let's say God of War, right? You got to tweak some of the settings to make sure you push it out. And, you know, some people, they just want to buy the unit and then play around with it. So for those kind of people, maybe, you know, the, the, the Steam Deck um, might not be the right unit for you. It's running on the older AMD Zen 2 um, architecture. So it basically, yeah, it's, it's just the older chip anyways. Then again, it probably wouldn't matter much because a lot of the games are being tweaked to run on it. So it could matter on future games or not, but it really depends on what's the point of having the hardware really fast if the software is not tweaked to reutilize the hardware efficiently, right? 
And if and only if the Asus ROG Ally pricing is competitive, then the prices of the Steam Deck would probably need to go down. I mean, it's the cheapest version is already cheap. If they could price the Asus ROG Ally low and competitive enough, um, the Steam Deck prices probably have to go down. And, you know, that actually could be a value deal. It could be actually be a good, right? So the good thing with the Steam Deck right now, right? So they were the OS, the Steam OS is optimized for the games. There's a lot of support already, a lot of updates being done, a lot of games that are running already in the Steam Deck, right? And you have that whole environment to use. And you could even run, if you need to or you want to, you could run Windows OS on the Steam Deck if you want to do it. Price is $399, basically $400. Bucks, and then you could have like a, a one terabyte uh, drive would be around 113 to 160 So at the most, you'll be spending like uh, 560 max to have a one terabyte drive and all of the games that's, uh, you know, built or certified to run on it and or the other games too that you could definitely run and even emulation right though i'm not really into that so I'm, i don't really follow those uh so those guides so and there's a lot of third par party products too so like the DAC, the case and a lot of like uh, a lot of updates that even you know you could upgrade the the fan the grips and whatever there's a lot of parts already available and then if you want to tinker with it, I was actually planning on getting a Steam Deck already and then just overclocking it and running some some software on it and then basically just playing it. The only reason why I held off is because I, I wanted to actually see what the Asus RPG Ally has to offer, right? In actuality, is if it doesn't run well, then I'll, I'll definitely get the Steam Deck. The good thing with the Steam Deck or, and or Steam is even with the Asus ROG Ally and, you know, with other competitors, right, in the market that could come in, right, Steam will still make money with, with more gamers, right? So a lot of games that will be bought on Steam that they'll, they'll install on, you know, the other devices too. So it'll be a win-win basically on, on that part, right? Now, so what everybody is waiting for, right? So the Asus um, ROG Ally, right? We've seen some videos on it. You've seen some specs, a lot of the marketing, right? So, well, let's go with the bad, right? So I'm waiting for it to come out. I want to see it. I'm not even sure if it comes out, how soon I could purchase it, right? So hopefully I'll be able to try it out and purchase it. And then if, you know, if it works well, then I'll keep it. If not, then I'll just uh, return it and get the Steam Deck as I originally was planning to do anyways. Let's go with the bad, right? So the support, we don't know. It's a new, it's a new product. There could be hiccups with it. There could be hardware issues even with it, depending, right? Because depending on, you know, what we get, it's new, it's just going to come out and we don't know yet, right? So, and the OS too, right? It's going to be Windows 11, but is it the Windows 11 that'll be tweaked specific for the Ally? Or is it the, you know, the Windows 11 we have that we always have to, to kind of clean up or, you know, with all the bloatware, right? So sometimes when Windows doesn't update, I'll actually have to look around and see what they turn on and off shut up the news, shut up whatever they're trying to turn on and or remove stuff from the startup apps. That's just how it is. I mean, on PC, it's easier, right, to, to manage those kinds of things. But on a small device, I'm not sure how easy that will be. And then the bad, too, the accessories, right? I, do, I did see some ports that it's plugged into, but it looks like it's the, the Asus graphics card, external graphics card. So do, will they have accessories that will just plug to the USB-C? And then you could, you know, with an HDMI out where you could plug it to a monitor or a TV, or how do you connect to it and then attach stuff to it, similar to how you could attach USB um, dock to the Steam Deck and whatever other devices can be used on it, basically, right? So we don't know yet, right? So we'll find out. And then the good is the potential, pretty much, right? It's going to run on the new AMD Zen 4 RDNA 3 APU or IGPU. It's integrated graphics anyways with the processor. You have the Z1 and the Z1 Extreme, uh, 1080p, 120 hertz refresh rate on the, on the screen. That sounds great. So it'll probably be crisper, you know, it'll be crisper and the refresh rate will be fast, which will be nice. I really like that. And then the price, right? So we still don't know this is the real price, but the leak price would be 700 bucks for the Z1 Extreme, which I think it's really good. So it means the rest will be lower, right? So that'll be very competitive. It's not far away from the top uh, Steam Deck device, right? So then, you know, the potential of the unit for upgrades, right? Maybe you could OC it or even install Steam OS on it. 
we don't know, right? But that sounds good. That the basically the potential sounds good. Then we just have to wait for the real units. And I like what I'm hearing, but like like with everything else, it's hard to be hyped on something just with just the specs, right? You need to see it. You need to see how it runs and and find out how you know. We'll find out soon enough, right? Soon enough. Crossing my fingers that well. Either way, either way, if it's good then I'll, I'll hopefully I'll be able to get one when it releases. If it's bad, then I'll just go to my original plan and get the Steam Deck and then get the games I want on it and just play with it, basically. But yeah, so so the important thing with the Steam Deck is the price, the, the spec and the price. It looks good. If it's higher than that, then I'm not sure if that's going to be that worth it. So because if it's higher than that, then it's stepping on the other the other um, handheld, more expensive handheld uh, devices to write on that price range. Okay, now let's check out some Diablo 4 posts. Okay, Diablo actually, Diablo on Twitter actually posted some, some mounts that we'll be able to use in Diablo 4. I got it here, kind of slowed it down so we can check it out. And it, it's it's nice, it looks pretty cool. Part of the game where you could mount and you could attack, it's actually pretty cool. So uh, yeah, let's just check it out, right? You got the reindeer type, then you got different types of mounts. You got the horse, standard horse, change the colors here. Then a scarred one, probably, you know, it's like a it's like a veteran horse that fought in the war. And then you got this uh scaly, is it dragon skin type, which is pretty, you know, pretty interesting, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, like a um like a mythical horse. Then you got this ghostly specter type, and then you got the undead. So it's it's uh very interesting then here you from mount could actually attack which is pretty pretty cool so you see that then you know the rogue then the necromancer launching and attacking from the horse and uh and the sorcerers too so Let's go back here. So it's it it is pretty cool that from the horse from the horse mount you can launch an attack and you know and then you got the selections of horse here. So you got you know different types of style which you can customize. It's you know depending on the liking and even I think the eye color you could probably change. So you got different designs different skin and definitely i'm sure we can change the um the saddle style too you got the zebra type you got this crystalline thing you got like a war veteran horse and you got the hell hellish it looks it actually even looks like a a horse that came from hell and you got these Vector type horse, so yep, it's in a way a pretty cool customization for the mounts. So that's it, and remember the server slam. So hopefully, see you there in the server slam. And thanks for watching. Thank you for being here. Like and subscribe. Have a good day. Bye now.